Hello, everyone. D. Alfred Ostrowski here. In this recording, I'm going to be giving a demonstration of a simple transaction converting ETH to WEATH. But in this case, I'm going to be performing this on the Sepolia testnet in comparison to the prior video that I did with the forked Ethereum. So I'm going to be using Sepolia and I'm going to be leveraging the MetaMask plugin. And I've already acquired some Sepolia testnet ether. Why am I doing this? Okay. It's always good to explore other variations if you have the means to do so. But I stand by my original opinion that really forked Ethereum is my preferred way of doing this. Why? Because it's so hard to get a hold of the Sepolia testnet ether, at least for me. And you do not have access to all the latest contracts that you would with forked Ethereum. Now, the disadvantage is you don't have an ether scan to validate transactions and things of that nature. So this brings a slightly different twist on the same activity and I think there's something to be learned in doing that. So without further ado, let's proceed. I'm using the exact same installation I did on the last video. So if you've done that, you could you could leverage that to great utility and just move forward. As usual, I'm using a C5 instance. If you have no prior experience, look at my earlier videos in particular with the early videos with forked Ethereum or even some of my videos with the AppTest blockchain, okay, where I've used very similar configurations. In this case, I've installed into my readme file that's going to be included with this video. I've installed the Node.js version 20 from those source and also Web3 library and ethers and the open supplement contracts. Okay, just in the same fashion we did with the last video. Why am I doing this way? Just like everything else, right? This is a good means of technology transfer. And it allows us for me to give a solution to you and it's going to work provided that you're doing it in a similar time frame and not 20 years from now or even two years from now that it should work exactly in the same fashion. So this works well. And the reason that I've always been doing it this way. So I've taken the liberty of starting up the instance. It's running already as we speak, the C5 large. And I've installed all the related software <clears throat> up to the creation of the project directory. And I've done this all under home Ubuntu as usual. Okay, so let's proceed. And this should go by pretty fast, right? So I'm gonna make a project directory. I'm gonna call it Sepolia demo and CD to that directory, okay? And just uh, like before, I'm going to do a NPX hard hat in it. That's gonna not only download, but also install my project directory with hard hat. I'm gonna default that to the default settings and it's a C5 instance, so it's gonna run pretty fast, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is config the hard hat config JS file that'll be established once this completes. So I can pull that in. So this is going to require a couple of things. It's going to require my Sepolia URL and I'm obtaining that from my Infura account. We can take a quick look at that. So I'm not gonna run through the creation of an Infura account. They're free, you can do it and it's, you don't need a lot of explanation to be able to accomplish that. Okay, I'm going, you would be creating a new API key. I created one called Alfred test. I set the check for the Sepolia test net and I have that URL to download again, it's free. Now I'm gonna delete mine, okay, after I publish this for reason that you don't want anyone to abuse it. And I'm also gonna be using a private key. I'm gonna be keep that uh, protected. And I'll be draining out that account, um, but I'm not going to publish that anyway. But again, I'm not using best practice for all this. You would use typically use environment files. But here, just to for brevity, I'm omitting 
the extra administration, but I just want you to keep that in mind right as we move forward. So here uh, it's completed with the hard hat installation. It looks good. Let me pull in the hard hat uh, JS config and I'm just pulled that out to use the VI editor as I usually do. And I copied it in from my GitHub, okay. And the whole project's backed up to GitHub. So you have what I have, you can take that in there. I'm gonna take in that Infura URL that's generated for me. That's an endpoint that allows me access to the Sepolia test net, right? So I'm just copy that in from my Infura address here. And don't use my Infura account, okay? It'll be long gone before this video is published, right? The next thing I'm going to do is pull in an account, and I'm not going to give you that account. Even though I'm going to drain the account, MetaMask these days, they make it very difficult to delete accounts. So for, for that purpose, I'm going to hard code it, but yet I'm not going to show that to you. So... I'm going to go uh, off screen. I'll just show you briefly what I'm going to access and how I gain access to the private key. If you don't have prior experience, in the end, it's pretty intuitive. And here I'll go into MetaMask. And I just want to show you the account. Okay. And this was the account I transferred from. And here I have an account 60. And I can't thrift out my accounts anymore because they changed that. Okay, I put in the five and I'm connected to Spolia and I have five ETH here. Okay, and here, so I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to take this off screen and grab that account, the private key. Okay, first of all, I want to make sure that it's connected. So I connect here to Spolia. It's an active account. And at this point, I can connect in here and get the account details and show the private key. I'm going to do that off screen. Okay. And I'm going to copy that in here. I'm also going to do that off screen as well really quick. So I'm going to take the MetaMask as opposed to doing a lot of fancy editing and I had an earlier version where I actually showed my private key but I don't want to do that now because then I'd have to recreate I have to pull out MetaMask and shuffle all the money out of it or whatever I have and then go back to reestablish it so it's not worth it for me so you know where to get it and I'm copying in that private key and I am going to put it under accounts as I'm doing right now. And you saw originally what it looked like. And I'm going to save that off and we can proceed. Okay. But you'll need to know that that is how I accessed it. So I edited that. I put it in there. Now we're good to go. Okay. We can move forward. Next thing I'm going to do is go to the contracts directory, right? Go to contracts and I'm going to modify locks. I did before and I'm just going to update solidity because I know it complained last time when hard hat started up, it wanted an earlier version of solidity. I could just delete lock and not use it at all, but just to be consistent. Okay. I'm going to pull in the check contract here and that was leveraged in the last video as well and this allows me to check the balance of my token for the weef so i'm going to pull that in we can take a quick look at it and this requires no modification it's relying on the opens up in library and the more of this that you do right you can dig a little bit deeper to how this is being accomplished right with opens up and then the solidity and you have the code for this so you can take a look at that right so everything is available on the blockchain and every passage you make through these transactions, you build on what you know, right? So here, what's going on? We have a the WEF contract, and this is different, right, between the testnet and the mainnet Ethereum. So we're going to find take a look at that in a second. And then I take that with my user account number 
and then I'm good to go. And it grabs the balance of that. So we're going to be using that the command line as I usually do. That's right. So, so those are good to go. And I can now I can start up the hard hat console. I want to get back to the main project director to do that. Right. So I'm just a little consistent with what I'm going to be doing. And now I'm going to be staging my commands. But let me pull an MPX hard hat console. Network Sepolia, and it's going to compile those files and then compile clean. I'm going to go to the testnet. I'm going to look up Weath. What you're going to find here, a little bit of confusion. There's multiple Weath contracts, and I'm using the last one actually here, the 56FD0. Okay. And that's what I'm grabbing it. Okay. And I have this as in this is in the README file, but the most important thing, right? This can change. Maybe it's gonna break at some point. You want to know where the process, right? And how to get that. So here I'm going to pull in. my little staging area and I'm going to pull that on chart. I already put that in here. The next thing I'm going to do is look at my account, make sure it's connected in here. I'm going to grab the account address and use that in the staging as well. We can check that account for the actual value okay of the token right the amount of the token and i'm gonna eventually assign that to my address so I'll just copy that in here and the last address that was the last account that i had there right so copy that in and now we can start inputting our commands okay and we can see the validation with the contract. And here's the benefit, right? Is matching these activities with the Etherscan application as well as MetaMask. And more of these that you do, you, you can realize, hey, I could program this, okay? And if you could program either of those applications or expand them, then you're getting a better comfort level right what's going on here so here i'm going to grab that contract and i'm going to uh, pull that into the command line through the ethers library and i can also deploy that now how did i deploy that i match that with this account with the private id so this is going to decline here and uh that's gonna be my gas amount right and this came back and I can actually look up that address if I'm so inclined as well. So proceeding on here, I can take, and you'll see that update there shortly, okay. Assign that to my address, and that's the 8872, and the WEATH contract as well. Now I have them hard coded here. I'll just leave it as such. And I'm gonna update my address right into the deployed contract. And I can check for the WEATH amount, which it's expected to be zero. I don't even have the token set on the account. That was a brand new account that I just put together for this demonstration. Okay, and I loaded the, the WEATH and you see, I don't even have any tokens listed here at this point or NFTs or anything else. So I can do a check and and expectedly it's gonna give me a zero, right? So here I'm gonna set up the rest of the transaction. And again, you can explore the other variation if you haven't had the opportunity to look at the forked Ethereum version. Here I'm gonna set a value to a variable. I wanna send the one and then also I wanna grab my transaction count and that's gonna be passed in as my nonce variable, which is a counter continually updating. So we want to assign something to that. You could do it manually. And you notice right here, it did update it to 4.9995. That was the gas amount for the deployment of the check contract. So I'm going to pass that transaction. And this is 
with the from just in the same fashion I use the same exact transaction I use for the Fort Ethereum, the my address suite contract, the value amount using the ethers library to convert it to weigh amount the internal unit denomination and the nonce variables passed in. I set the gas limit 100,000 and my gas price was picked up through the ethers library. So I can do the EX build and I'm going to grab the deployers for the signers and then I can pass in the contract, right? And execute it, right? And send the transaction, not the contract rather, but the transaction. And this is a very simplified transaction. We're going to build on this, right? So I have to do a TX send. And, and I got that transaction hash. I can pass this in. And this is the one nice advantage, right, of using the Sepolia. You want to do as many ways as you can, right? You just, you're just going to learn more by doing it that way, right? I can pass this in here and... And I can see that transaction and the value and everything's showing up here pretty fast, okay, on the amount. So let me plug into my wallet and this will be updating here, but I want to see the token. I can import that token contract here and grab it from my little staging area. Right here that I use in the check operation. And I can copy it in and so I recognize it as weave. And I can import it, right? Now this should be updating, it didn't update yet. Let's give it a little bit. Now I can do the check contract at the command line. In pass runs, it ran a little bit faster, but it's not always guaranteed, right, to run. If you know here the deploy contract, it did respond and oh, there we go. So it went from 4.99 to three, plus minus the extra gas and the one we so there we go. We did the transaction. We did on Sapoli test net variation, and everything is talking about GitHub as usual. And we're able to validate that programmatically as well as through the MetaMask wallet. So thanks for listening. Hope this helps. Take care, like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Take care.